the climate was starting to change at that time. Uh, in, the, in the, I think it was like in the 70s. I believe it was the 70s. Uh, the kids going to school at the peak high, matter of fact. Um, they had a walkout. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just, all the kids, did not go to school and so the churches opened the doors and the different homes and stuff and was teaching from there and uh, so uh, that was after your time right yes okay. yeah okay. I didn't too much uh, uh, we pretty mm -hmm. mellow during my time mm -hmm. <laughs> but the kids coming up were a little bit more independent and just wasn't going to keep quiet like we were raised to do. Uh -huh. And so... Well, how uh, did the broader community feel about that walkout? Actually, they were all for it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, first, it was like a big shock because that's never happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, after they got to realizing that the kids were serious, they got on board and the churches started opening their doors and stuff and back to studying. <laughs> that one so, one. Yeah, got back to studying. So, hey, it wasn't that y'all get a free pass. Y'all gonna still study, but just study here. <laughs> I didn't really have any trouble finding a job. Mm -hmm. I think I started out at hotels. Uh, it was like, Somebody I knew, they were working there and said, come on, and so it was that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then later, as I got a little older, nursing home, I got started getting into the medical part of it. And then uh, after that, I went to the, to the department stores and grocery stores along that line. And then uh, my husband was in service, so I, we moved to uh, Panama, the Canal Zone, and uh, then after we come back, uh, see, we went to Colorado, and then we went to ended up in uh, Columbus, Georgia, mm -hmm. and then uh, we come back home, and that's when I went to work for K and I. And then I, I did the home care too at that time because I always had worked two to three jobs uh, just to make sure, you know, my kids had whatever. And uh, I still kind of do that because the grandkids and great grandkids, yeah, you know, they need things. Okay, I think uh, Canal Zone was probably the most different. Because mm -hmm. it was just different people, period. Mm -hmm. But uh, they all were nice, uh, friendly people. Uh, we lived on post, so, um, you know, it was that situation whereas if anything should happen and your kids are at school, then your kids would just be flown out to one area and you'd be flown out somewhere else. So you, there's no connection with your kids or family. you just be, there. everybody be taken care of until you can reconnect again because at that time it was getting a little dicey right. and they didn't know what may happen. Mm -hmm. um, the food was different, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was much, basically pretty good. We made friends downtown, so we really got a chance to enjoy some of the different foods. Cause we was downtown walking one day and I ate from a vendor and found out that it was monkey. And, uh, and I think there was some snake on, somebody had some snake. But when I first got there, I saw this big thing running around in the yard. I didn't know what it was. What was it? A big laguana. Oh, okay. A big one. <laughs> and they were everywhere. <laughs> so that was different. But uh, in Columbus, Georgia, it was, it was pretty different too because there were just so many different uh, races and they were a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
it it, it was it was really really friendly and uh, but there you saw a lot of different singers because everything was free you know the big name singers would come to the park and they just I mean you had a lot of good singing going on and you know people will be there uh, they're gonna pack up food and stuff and went there to enjoy them mm -hmm. so uh, there was a lot of opportunity down there for the younger ones to, uh, if they need, you know, thought about getting involved in that culture, they could. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was very, very different. Very different. And they still doing that to this day, so I really didn't know a whole lot about Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. And um, I can vaguely remember years ago how it was. And um, then about 10, 10 years ago or so, it was well, about 15 now, that the, uh, the people had it. They would, you know, it was really, really nice. And then all of a sudden, uh, you couldn't find where it was or when it was or, you know, or you go there and there wasn't a whole lot going on. And so I said, it's such an important event that I think our kids need to know what it's all about. So uh, I went to the people that had had it and asked them, you know, how about I help with it? And they really wasn't interested in really talking about Juneteenth, so I just said, okay. And so that's what got me started. I said, well, okay. I want my kids and grandkids to know about what Juneteenth is about. So uh, that's how I got started. So I was leery about bringing who would really want to help. So I kind of got everything ready. I'm not too much on the computer. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. So I had everything in place except for the computer, the flyers, that and the informational part. But I had gone got people lined up to sing and dance and everything else. I just couldn't get the information out. And then I started asking people and they started saying, yeah. yeah. So that's how we got started. I think their their goal was really to our kids to have the same thing as the white kids and the equal opportunity and to have the same learning that the white kids had. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that worked out fairly good. Um, today's time is, you know, as time went on, I think it kind of, it's starting to go backwards. It, I, this is just how I feel. Uh, there's so much prejudice that has been brought up now that uh, I, I don't think our kids really quite understand it yet. Mm -hmm. And they're, so they're just assuming things are okie dokie. And, uh, but you, you're so stressing to your kids, be careful out there because it is not the same. And you can get caught up so easily. And uh, it's just every day you see something different. You know, uh, my grandson has come home and he has said, Grandma, people have, uh, are walking down the street and they have literally ran on the sidewalk trying to run me over. Right. And you wouldn't think that would be going on here, but it is. Mm -hmm. Here in Topeka. Here in Topeka. Wow. They would chase you in, the, in your car. And it's, it's uh, People are just not aware of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so you, especially after dark, you really have to be careful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they're beginning to catch on because different people are beginning to speak out about things going on now. And um, I even had got a call to say, uh, the kids are asking for help. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a person that really worked for kids and asked could they have my help. I said, you certainly can. Mm -hmm. All you do is tell me when you need me. And so, you know, everything else is dropped. I'm coming and, uh, to help with, with the kids. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. if they got nerve to ask us so they can stay out of trouble and stuff, 
you surely got to help them. There's no way that you can say no. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. <laughs> that we all get along. We all have the same end result is that we're just trying to make it and uh, trying to be happy and safe. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, either where it goes, whether you're black, purple, or green, mm -hmm. the outcome is still gonna be the same. Yeah. So what are we arguing and fussing about? Uh, really, uh, it's nothing really important except for the color of the skin. It, that's sad.